Hello and welcome back to STEM with Steve. Today we're going to do an introductory lesson to Pythagoras, where we're going to look at his theorem which was on right angle triangles. And what he found was that basically there's a relationship that exists between the longest side and the other two sides. Now this was two, over two and a half thousand years ago that he was able to find this without computers, without modern day technology, and it's kind of cool the relationship that he found. So let's jump on in. So Pythagoras' theorem is pretty simple. It's basically the hypotenuse, or the biggest side squared, is equal to the other two sides squared added together. Now the trick here is that area, or that space on, this, uh, on, these, rec on these squares, are similar or they're exactly the same, they're exactly the same measurements. I'm gonna go through it and unpackage what that meant. So most people think of Pythagoras as the Greek scholar had a big school and people would come and have chats to him about what he found in, uh, in this sort of relationship. So they would spend days talking, looking at drawing right angle triangles and then trying to see if they're proportional or not. Now, most people know this um, version of Pythagoras, but there's a bit of a darker secret to him. He actually was running a cult now, if people didn't believe in Pythagoras' theorem, um, and there's one guy in particular, they ba he basically take them out on a boat and kick them off if they didn't believe in his theorem. And there's a particular reason why, which we'll unpackage later. Um, but yeah, that's the basic general gist. So the leading question I have is, if you had a ladder that was on a four meter high wall, and the ladder was three meters away at the base, what would be the measurement of the ladder? Or how long would it be? And we're gonna do that first with this little, um, diagram, which we're about to do. So the learning objectives that I have is that we're going to learn how to label a triangle with the sides, identify where the hypotenuse is, and then introduce Pythagoras' theorem. And then we're going to learn how to rewrite the theorem using different side notation. So the first step I want you guys to do in your books is to draw a right angle triangle with the measurements of five, four, and three. Now you need to use a ruler here and measure off three centimeters, four centimeters, and hopefully you'll find when you draw that last one, if it's a perpendicular, it'll be five centimeters long. Afterwards then draw a grid. So the bottom will have three centimeters by three. So we'll have nine little boxes. This one will have four boxes by four, so 16 boxes. And then you'll find the big one will have five by five or 25 boxes. If you add 25, uh, sorry, 16 plus nine together, you will find that it e actually equals 25. But this is the fundamentals of what Pythagoras found. So draw it with the three squares. So just pause the video and have a go at that. And if you're not sure, there's a video I'm about to show that goes through exactly how it looks. Cool, so here is the video. Right angle triangle, hypotenuse is C. So if you square all the sides, find the three becomes nine, the four becomes 16. Cool music as well. And the five will have 25. Now, if you st restack these boxes together, this is where something cool happens. They're exactly the same. So when we look at a triangle, we need to have a bit of common language between it, and we need to understand what vertices and edges are. So if we have a right angle triangle like this, labeled A, B, and C, those letters represent the vertices or the points of the shape. The edges then are on the, the edges, on the sides of the, or basically the sides of the shape. And the way that we describe them is with um, little letters. So little letters represent the side because it's opposite this angle. So little b because it's opposite the capital B. This one over here would be little a, and then this one over here would be little c to make that work. So then to describe the length, very similar, we would point at that, and that would be the length AC because it goes from vertice A all the way through to C. This length here, another way of describing it would be length BC, and then this length here would be AB. So if just pause the video and see if you can label that one. Awesome, so you should have found AC was equal to 10. BC was equal to six, uh, uh, sorry, AB was equal to eight. And the last one, BC was equal to six. Cool. So a um, couple of ways of re re remembering this, some people use the word hippopotamus, so hypotenuse. 
That sounds like a hippo. And hippos are really big. So that's the bit why it's linked to the biggest side. The hypotenuse is always opposite that right angle. That's really important to learn. So in your books, you'll need to write this. So the hypotenuse is always the longest side in a right angle triangle. It's always opposite the right angle. And we call the other sides the legs. So the smaller sides, we call those the legs. And then here's a pretty cookie cutter video um, image of what the hypotenuse and what a right angle triangle looks like. So the sides are there, hypotenuse opposite the right angle, as you can see there. Now, the weight reason why it's opposite the right angle, if you think about the hypotenuse as it gets bigger and bigger, it increases the length of the triangle side, doesn't it? So if you have a small angle, see so it makes a small side, but if you make a big angle, it makes a big side. And if you have a right angle, it makes a really big side. So hypotenuse, if we look at that, try and identify it, should have found that it was this guy here. So that's the AC in this one. We should see that's AB. This one, AC again. This one, it's BC. Cool. So Pythagoras' theorem, he actually did not know what um, algebra was. So he didn't use the rule that we saw at the very beginning. He had a slightly different way of describing it. He described it in words, or probably in Greek, not English, but it would look something like this. The hypotenuse squared, or the biggest side squared, is always equal to the sum of the other two sides squared. So let's say that again, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the other two sides squared added together. And that's basically Pythagoras' theorem. Now, because we have some understanding of algebra, there's a better way of describing that, which is what this rule is. So h squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So the area that you see in the h is equal to the area of a squared plus b squared. In. So if we had a triangle like this with a 3-4 triangle, which we've done before, just to show you graphically how this looks, if you go out four blocks that way, and then you get 16, and if you go three blocks down, you then get nine, because three times three is nine. Then if we go out this way, we would get the five by adding those together to get 25. This is what we call the 3-4-5 triangle. It's Pythagoras' fundamental triangle. It's where everything sort of comes from, it's systemic of this. So then we could put it into the rule just to see if this actually sort of balances out as well. So H we can put in is five. Um, we can then put four squared plus three squared. Let's see what happens. So 16 plus nine, we get 25. And then to work out H, we need to then do the square root of it because that's the opposite of squaring and we're left with five. Cool. The other cool way of looking at this graphically, if I take those nine blocks at the bottom and put it around the corners on this side over here, the, the, the blue um, square, you can see they fit perfectly. And then the other side, the 16, fits then perfectly if we rotate it in and jam it into that place there. So the area of those two, we should see now see the area of the two small sides is equal to the area of that big side. Cool. Another thing that you might see, depending on the school system that you're in, they have different ways of writing Pythagoras' theorem. So sometimes you might see it like this. Instead of H, they say C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Now, personally, I don't like it because it's just a random letter. I like saying H squared is equal to A squared plus B squared simply because h represents the hypotenuse and then i have that link in my mind when i do more complex things um, you can then also change it around so if, say you had a triangle with the label e c e f g you could then say it's e squared is equal to f squared plus g squared similarly if we just use symbols it doesn't really matter we could say in this case smiley face squared is equal to frowny face squared plus peace sign squared it doesn't really matter what the symbols are it's just so that we know the position of where they are. So if we wanted to write down now Pythagoras' theorem for these, just pause the video and see if you can get them. Cool, so what you should have found with the first one, the hypotenuse is C, so therefore it would be C squared equals A squared plus B squared. The next one with B was F squared is equal to D squared plus E squared. With C, you should have found Z squared equals Y squared plus X squared. D, you should have seen V squared is equal to S squared plus T squared. E, you should have seen E squared is equal to G squared plus F squared. And then the last one, X squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Cool. So a quick little review, you should know now how to label the triangle sides. 
The hypotenuse is always the longest side. And we use this rule, h squared is equal to a squared, b squared. Sorry, that should say a squared plus b squared. But that works as well. Now the book work that you guys need to do then is 3K, questions one, three, four, six, and eight. And if you want a really big challenge, don't spend more than 20 minutes on this, question number 10. That's it for me. Hopefully you've picked up a bit on Pythagoras then. If you do have any questions, please put them in the video down below. Um, and yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time on Steam It With Steve. Adios.